Okay, the biblical truth of our hymn. Today's hymn, don't have much history on it. Lead Me to Calvary by Jeannie Evelyn Hosai. She was born in a Quaker family. I mean, clean living people, but all have sinned come short of the glory of God. Uh, no outside influences of television, radio, movies. Uh, she wrote many poems, mo many works, and was first published when she was 13 years old. I mean, I guess a child can be creative when they play with a phone and fooling around with doodads. At 16, she began to write stories, articles, and designs for crochet needlework for magazines. Oh, yeah, 16 years old. In 1898, her first hymn was published. She was a member of the Society of Friends or Friends Church, a by name of the Quakers. That's all what I could find so far from her. And when we look at her hymn, Lead Me to Calvary, well, what, what, what does that bring you to? It doesn't give you to the Dome of the Rock. It doesn't bring you to some city in North America. It leads you to the very first of three parts of the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scriptures. King of my life. Well, he's not king of the church, but she didn't say church. She said her life. The royalty of her life was the king, capital K. I crown thee now. Revelation 19 says the, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords had many crowns. And I'm under the assumption without scripture that those crowns that are placed, those many crowns that are placed on his head are placed there by us. Thine shall be the glory be. There's coming a time when all glory will not be on sports. It will not be on little statues and trophies. It will be not what man can do, but what Jesus Christ has done. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow. All the religious people, the great hierarchies of religions, and only one of them was crowned of thorns upon his brow, upon Calvary. And we read about with Thomas and Jesus. Reach through that finger and put your hand in the hole of my hands. Thrust your fist in the hole of my side. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is still marked after his resurrection. He's still marked in eternal life. And one God must wonder if the marks on his forehead, upon his head, are still there from the crown, as they are in the hands, the feet, and his side. That thorn was the curse of Adam for disobeying God. God said, Thou shalt not eat of the, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And Adam disobeyed God. And the curse that Adam got was for the disobedience of listening to his wife was thorns and thistles shall come from the ground. The, the sweat of thy face so you know, return back to death, to dust. Christ took on those thorns. Christ is going to remove those thorns in the millennium. There will be no more thrones in eternal life. Lead me to Calvary. We have thorns first, then Calvary. The sufferings and the death. We'll look at the chorus, uh, if I remember, at the end. Show me the tomb where thou hast laid. Suffered, thorns, died according to scripture was buried look at the gospel message quaker society of friends this woman knew the gospel of jesus christ and proclaimed it in her home about jesus christ what do you say about the quakers i don't say much about quakers i don't know much about them but i'll say something about jenny she knows what she's talking about when it comes to the gospel. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
and Miss Hustley, and forgive me if I'm saying her name wrong, knows exactly what the gospel is. And she's preaching it by her poem. And it has been published. What's the Bible say about publishing the word? Glory. Tenderly mourned and wept. The women wept. Peter wept at his denial of Jesus. Probably went off somewhere weeping. That he died. John probably wept. Only one that did not wept was uh, Judas, and he died. All the lives that Jesus Christ touched, and there he is in the tomb. Stone cold dead. Angels in robes of light arrayed a garden thee while I slept. Not only angels. Now the Bible says those angels were there when Mary showed up. Those angels were there at the tomb of the empty bed where Jesus laid. It says that the, the humans were there guarding that tomb too. Whether it be Pilate's men or the, the men of the high priest. There was a watch set at that tomb. There was a seal put on that tomb. It cannot be told that the disciples went and stole the body of Jesus. It was three days and three nights, according to the scriptures, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man must be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. There it is. Jesus Christ, my God, my Savior, stone cold dead. I like that. My God died. My God gave up his life, gave up the ghost, the Bible said. He suffered and died, according to Scripture. There he is dead, laying in a tomb that wasn't even his. Stone cold dead. Verse or stanza three. Let me, like Mary, through the gloom, come with a gift to thee. Mary Magdalene, the Marys came, brought spices. They brought spices to a dead body. Those women that came early in the morning, the first day of the week, had no idea they were coming to a risen Savior. They had no idea they were coming to angels. They are coming to a dead body and they get some way, well, halfway, we don't know, but they get on the way to the tomb and they're like, wait a minute, who's going to roll that stone away? They had no idea that tomb was going to be rolled away. They had no idea what they were coming to, but to seek a dead Jesus in sorrow and tears. A dead Jesus. Come with a gift to thee. That gift was myrrh, aloes, for a dead body. Show to me now the empty tomb. And when they came to that tomb, they said, Oh, who's going to roll that tomb? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a minute. What? What do you see? What? Look. What? Look. What? There's no stone. We were just worried about the, who's going to roll that heavy stone away. And look, I see the mouth of the cave. I see men in white shining, and that's scripture. We don't have to worry about that, that, that stone no more. Somebody rolled it away. Show me now to the empty tomb. Then they come to realize those angels say to them, Why seek ye thou the dead amongst the living? You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He's told you. He's gone on before. He's been resurrected. He's not here. See that sign behind my shoulder? He is risen. There it is. There's a sign right behind my shoulder. That's what those angels declared. For God suffered and died, according to scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to scriptures. Those angels proclaim, he is not here. He is risen. He's no longer dead. He was dead. Dead on that, that, that cave. Sealed. Sealed. has gone. The, the stone has been rolled away. Talk about rock and roll. Christ is the rock that rolled that stone away, according to the Bible. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ. He's not here. He's risen. Laid me to Calvary. That's where he died. Now, I've always said that, listen, to be a Christian, you must come to Calvary on your knees. And you may not have knees. You know what I mean. You must come to Calvary with a bended heart, 
with a repentant heart. You got to come to Calvary as a guilty pardon, or you're not going to get no pardon. In order to get a pardon, you must have guilt. You come to Calvary guilty. You come to Calvary that suffering, bleeding Savior, say that blood that is shed right now, Acts 20, 28, the blood of God. I plead that blood, the Lamb of God, which will take away my sin. I know the Bible says the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world, but as you come to Calvary, that Lamb of God take away my sin. Though my sin be as scarlet, they should be made white as snow. That is Jesus Christ who suffered on that cross and died. And you come to the empty, you come to the tomb where they laid that dead body. And you say that dead body, unlike the disciples, unlike the women, you're coming up. I read the scriptures. I know the scriptures. You're coming up. I've got to have a resurrected Savior. And when we come, the third part of that gospel is you risen. Three days and three nights, you've come out of that tomb alive, proclaimed by the angels, proclaimed by the women. They went and told the disciples, and even the disciples didn't believe it. And so Jesus showed up in the upper room and chided them for their unbelief. You see, you come to the cross as a sinner. You come out of the empty tomb as a Christian. Catholics don't do that. The church does not do that. They come to the to Calvary and they put that cross with the dying Savior on a piece of silver, on a piece of gold, on a piece of wood, on a piece of stone, and they wrap it around their neck and they, that's what I am. And they go to the they go to the tomb with Easter bunnies and this star and colored eggs and all the kind of fancy ordeals. And for the Catholic Church, their, their Savior died on a Friday, but mine did not. Mine died during the midweek on a Wednesday, three days and three nights, according to scriptures. Good Friday is not according to scriptures, so I, I rule out the Catholic Church. And I'm not talking about individual Catholics. There are be Catholics that can be saved and know the Lord and go into glory when the rapture happens. And then they come out of, out, of the, out of the empty tomb and they put Jesus Christ right back on that crucifix in the church and in between their breaths. My Jesus is no longer in that cross. And Hebrews says he's no longer going back to that cross. Hebrews says he's no longer going to die, but offered one sacrifice forever once. The Catholic Church does it every Mass. So you see, the media says that church is Christian. Uh, not, not in the eyes according to the gospel. Not in the eyes according to the scriptures. Not in the eyes according to God. You don't put Jesus back on the cross. You don't put Jesus... Uh, you know, with eggs, you don't put Jesus with all kinds of superstition, you don't put Jesus for tradition, and you come out as a Christian, you come out as a deceiver. That's what happens. <laughs> Leave me to Calvary, like I said. You come to Calvary as a sinner that needs a pardon, you come out of that empty tomb as a Christian. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. This woman, this Quaker, wh wherever she be, she is quoting from the scriptures. She's quoting to us the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures. And was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture. Now she's telling her, hey, after I'm a Christian, after I come out and visited an empty tomb, you're not on that cross no more, Jesus. Now, Jesus, I got to bear my cross. And every cross is to be heavy. Every cross is to be carried by your own self. And who, my cross is not as your cross. And your cross is not as my cross. Daily. You don't take a day off from serving the Lord. And it's for thee, Jesus, not for myself. I don't go out in a public ministry just so people go, no, I don't go for me. I go for Jesus. I go for lost souls. I go for souls that are saved that need to grow for the Lord. Even thy cup of grief to share in the garden. Sins. I'm a sinner. Though I'm saved, I still got those sins. I still need to confess my sins. Thou hast borne all for me. Everything is by what Jesus Christ has done. All of it. I'm not a tiny bit saved. I'm not a little bit saved. I'm not 1% saved. All of my sins are under the blood upon salvation. 
And then the, the chorus is, lest I forget Gethsemane. Never forget Gethsemane. The Lord's Supper in your church is not to have a little biscuit and have, have a little cup of grape juice. It's to remind you of Jesus Christ, Gethsemane. That night, he went before God three times as his disciples slept. And Lord, God, this cup may pass for me. Not death, the cup. The death is no problem for Jesus. It's the fact is that God manifested in the flesh without sin, completely sinless, is now going to have to carry all the wickedness of mankind. Oh, God, that cup can pass from me. You think he was pleading that garden about the death? You're 100% wrong. Get right. Lest I forget thy agony. The suffering. The suffering. Salvation did not come easy for us. It came by suffering. Isaiah 53. Lest I forget thy love for me. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The love of God that he gave Jesus, the love of Jesus that he suffered and died, are one in one. No greater love, but the Bible says God is love. No man comes to Calvary with a, for a party ever knows love because they're not of God. You're, you're Satan, the devil. He's a liar. He's a murderer from the beginning. That is your dad. That is your father. You have no means of love because Satan never has love. Satan never shows mercy. Satan never has grace. And yet when we come to Calvary looking for that pardon, there's a love. There's the grace. There's the mercy. There's the gift. There's the suffering for us. And we don't get that love. We don't obtain to us the love of God, the love of the fruit of the Spirit, joy and peace, until we receive Christ as our Savior and God adopts us into the family. Then we become the family of God. Then we know exactly what love is. But, oh, look at the love that God puts upon us before we become his son. As a wicked, vile sinner approaching God ready to be forgiven lead me to calvary what's calvary it's agony it's love it's not to be forgotten it's grief it brings us to an empty tomb that was filled by jesus christ it brings gloom look, look at this this is not a uplifting sing on a holy great sun holy day this is to be sung in the characteristic of the suffering Messiah, the suffering Savior. It's not happy. It's not joyful. It's not to joke about. It's what Christ suffered and died for us, according to scriptures. I put away, I put away the Quakerness. And I look at this woman. This woman may be a Quaker, but I guarantee she knows what the gospel is. You may be a Catholic. If you know what the gospel is, you're saved. You may be a Baptist and depart from me, workers of iniquity. It's not, it's not a religion. I know many more dead Baptists than I do alive Baptists. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Quakers in heaven. And those that are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this hymn puts it down fat. This puts down the suffering of God who died for our sins upon Calvary and came out alive. You want to try that for Allah? Oh, he's dead. And in 2019, he's still dead. All the popes that are dead, 2019, they're still dead. Joseph Smith, dead by a mob of men that he went fractionizing with their wives, he's dead. Still dead. Russell, dead. Oh, man. Oh, 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 no. No, they took Russell and they put him in hell because they say hell is the grave. Oh, man, that guy is in the grave and in hell. How dare you put your friend in hell? Mary Becker, Eddie, she's dead. She's got the telephone in her coffin. No one's ever, she's never reached out to call anybody. And I hope I didn't take that slogan. <laughs> that telephone was never rang on the other side for her. Or neither has she rang anybody else. Baptist pastors are dead. They're still dead. Priests, they have died. They're dead. Jesus Christ, God, manifest in the flesh, dead. No longer dead. Seated at the right hand of the Father. You want a good Calvary song? You want a good song of the gospel? You want to, there you go, right there. 
Now, let me ask you a question, my friend. I told you, listen, the, the biblical truth are his. I, I never told you we're going to go after mean, rotten song or hymns. You know, we classified you know, the other day. It was, oh, we're going to sing a song one night, whatever it was. And I looked at it and said, wait a minute. When did the hymn, our, our books are called hymn, when did they become songs? And I was thinking, a song has nothing to do with God but a hymn. When Jesus left the, that, that, the upper room that night, they sang a hymn. We don't know what that hymn was. Probably the book of Psalms. The Bible says sing songs on you, but there's all kinds of songs out there. You know how many people I've met who are Christians who have played music to try to void out and to drown out the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I think five of them so far. They've all been saved. You want him to bring you back to what Christ is suffering? Listen, we need to go back to Bethel. Now, physically, your Bethel may be gone. You may not be on a, I'm not talking about a physical Bethel. I'm talking about the place where you met God for the very first time. I don't mean in a church. I don't mean in a religious atmosphere. But the very first time you met God at Calvary. Whatever Jesus was up on that cross to you. You need to go back often. Every time your church takes the Lord's Supper, that's to remind you of the sufferings of Christ. And that's to remind you that Christ is coming again. I definitely put lead me to Calvary. If I were to do a hymn, hymn book for, for a church, personal hymn, take out all the other garbage, this would be in it. A lot of the hymns that we've done so far, garbage. Not many. Not all. Calvary. Calvary. Life doesn't begin at 40. Life doesn't begin at 50. Life starts at Calvary. And life begins when you come out of that empty tune as a Christian. That's where life begins. John says, he that has the Son, capital S-O-N, has everlasting life. That means that moment I receive Christ, I come out of that empty tomb alive, given life, eternal life. My life is never going to end. I'll never get over to hell. Whether I die in this body, be absent from the body, or rapture, be present with the Lord. You come out of Calvary as a Christian through the empty tomb, you got eternal life. Mark this as a good one.